Hi, I'm Dennis. Welcome to the port of Asberg. We are the biggest uh, hub for offshore wind in the world. Well, welcome uh, to the Inlet on the Road. I'm delighted to have the uh, CEO of the Port of Esberg with us today, Dennis Yule Peterson. Uh, first of all, can I ask you, Dennis, I mean, just to describe the port as it is today and how it's become such a significant uh, centre for the energy sector, both in Europe and, and beyond, really? Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me here today. Why well, have it have been a development you know, going through a number of years? We are close to the sea and have always been living from the sea here. So we've been through the uh, oil and gas market in, the, uh, in Denmark specifically, and also supporting the rest of the North Sea. And naturally, when some of the bigger and the first offshore wind farm was built here in the in the in the North Sea, then of course this port have been supporting these for the last two decades. Okay, and, and um, give us some sort of key facts and figures around, around the port and its size and significance. Yeah, so the port, uh, seen in a, in a Danish context, is one of the biggest ports in Denmark, but it's by far also the most complex <clears throat> because it's a 155 years old port, but it started with the export of Danish farm produce and food produce, then it became one of the northern Europe's most... Uh, uh, biggest fishing ports with over 700 fishing vessels, but it also the only port in Denmark supporting the oil and gas activities in Denmark, and also becoming a major hub in the in the renewable, uh, especially in context to offshore wind, where half of the offshore wind parks in Europe today are being supported from here, are been built partly from here. Yeah. I think that's a significant factor. I and mean, when we look at the, the port here, no one can cease to be uh, impressed by the um, amount of equipment for the offshore wind market that's sitting on the docks here and that's servicing Europe's uh, wind industry. I mean, how did it become so significant in that market? I think part of it is because Denmark was in, in a pioneering in, 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 in erecting these offshore wind parks. But we also had onshore wind, so a lot of the production activities for the wind turbines were in the hinterland and still in the hinterland to the port. We will see a different future, of course, where they move to the port. But as a port authority, it's of course challenges because, from from a, as I said, it's a complex port. Seven and a half thousand people go to work here every day, uh, six thousand port calls. So we service all these markets, also the oil and gas. We service the wind market, and we also need to service the power to X in the future. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I understand that one of the interesting developments in recent times is that you've um, uh, built a digital twin for the port to model the port. Can you tell us about that and what you're going to gain from having that? Yeah, so that goes back to while we have to have all these different activities among the 200 companies in the port, we cannot ask somebody to go away and then because now we now want to build more wind. So we were in a lack of space, even though we have port expansion ongoing. And, and so is the rest of Europe when it comes to port space in context to offshore wind. One of the things by building a digital twin is we could optimize where do we put things in the port. So earlier days we have a maximum installed one and a half gigawatt every year. By optimizing where we're going to put things, move things around in the port, we will be able to achieve four and a half gigawatt a year. So that's a different way of thinking. And then, of course, the digital twins help us with those decisions, yeah. So big plans for expansion. Um, uh, what is the future for the port as you see it in terms of the uh, expansion? I think that we have some key things uh, related to energy. Of course, we have to support uh, a lot of the developments for, for offshore wind in Europe. Today, we have nearly 10 gigawatt already booked of projects in the port. But we also need to keep servicing the oil and gas industry, which is now entering the phase of carbon capture. And we saw one of the first projects being launched a couple of years, a couple of weeks ago in the port. This and is Project Green Sand. Is Green Sand, right? yes. Yeah, yes. So this is very important for us to create terminals so we could import CO2 in the future. Even further ahead, and that's only a few years ahead, it will be, for example, we have to, to, to create terminals for the green ammonia. There's also a hydrogen project and so on. So we very fast we will enter this uh, uh, new form of energies uh, and, and, and that kind of economy in, in Europe. So how important is this kind of sector coupling aspect? To the, the sector project? coupling is very important uh, in creating the, 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 good, the best condition for so for. for putting a P2X. So when when we had the possibility to, to get away from the coal here and have the, the central heating system and they could take the excess heating from the P2X uh, plants, 
that given a competitive advantage, of course it does. And will be one of the first uh, in Denmark, at least, to have these bigger projects. We also see a lot of smaller projects, but the bigger projects where we see the economies of scale will be here because we are close to the offshore wind, the green energy, and we have the possibility to buy the excess heating using in our houses here. Yeah. You've been involved in the energy sector for quite a few years. Um, what, what's the biggest change you've seen um, here in Esberg over that time? The biggest change is when it comes to specifically offshore wind, it goes so fast. What you think is going to happen the year after, the, uh, uh, it's not, I mean, it's going to do twice as fast as you can imagine going. And also the plans are getting there fast and we have to ramp up constantly and be ready for tomorrow. And, but of course, we still need to see the decision process is going faster, both on a national level, but also on a European level. And that's the challenges, of course, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I sense that that is uh, perhaps one barrier. If, if anything that's going to hold you back is getting the right, the right policy and regulation in place. Are you optimistic that that's going to come through soon? I hope so, because you have the other industry, as we just mentioned, with the hydrogen economy going into the European Union. If we don't get this fixed for offshore wind so we can build some more wind farms faster, then, of course, the other thing is not going to come either. So it, it, there is a really push towards getting things done and getting it done, done, done now, not only for the green transition, but also for the uh, energy security of Europe. Fantastic insights. Um, can I just ask you finally, on a sort of personal note, uh, what is it that kind of motivates you to get up each day and uh, play your part in that, the energy transition? I think it's a possibility that it might change the dynamics in, in Europe towards Denmark, of course, in this, in this perspective. And then on a local level, it is, if we do it right, we are certainly on the right place at the right time, and we can create a difference also for, for the city here. We can be, be, be part of creating that transition from the traditional oil and gas jobs into the, to the new energy here. Dennis Peterson, thanks for your time. Thanks for speaking to Inlet.